on the Everton show this week. We spoke to Graeme Stewart about today's game, and when I asked him if he had any special pre-match preparation and readiness for the game, he said, yes, Darren, I'm going to stay in on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I don't think he did. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been surprised if that was, uh, you know, if he'd gone along with that. He does enjoy his, his social life, uh, does, does Ian? And, um, you know, I don't think he'll, he'll be running up and down that touchline too much and, uh, and really struggling after his night out so <laughs> preparation wise i don't think it'll really affect him here we go the famous z cars theme tune the theme tune of everton football club since the early 1960s echoes around this stadium as mark halsey himself of course a cancer sufferer in the past leads out the two teams mark halsey that Fourth official there, Roger Dilks as well. Don't know whether he was before your time, was he? Or he might have been coming to the end of his career, Roger, as you were starting off. I don't remember him, but uh, to be honest, looking at them, trying not to be disrespectful, I'm a bit upset <laughs> you, 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 you thought we may have played together, Darren. <laughs> there we go. The two teams line up. Terrific reception. The park end's pretty full. The main stand's pretty full. The family enclosure is rammed. It's Ladder Street is well full as well and it's terrific to see on uh, as i said a dismal day's weather here on merseyside it's really interesting looking at the two teams lining up darren the the different shapes and sizes of all the players that have offered to play today is it's a far cry from what you see in the premier league matches as <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's certainly certainly obvious as you, as you look at them from from we're far up here it's basically a sunday league game at a premier league ground isn't it? <laughs> And to be honest, I spoke to a few of them in the dressing room beforehand and they were so excited about the quality mm. of the pitch and, and the chance to get out there and, and play football and, and score some goals. And, you know, the number of them are really hoping to score a hat-trick today and hope to take the match ball home. <laughs> Roger Dilks and Mark Halsey, there's MC Harvey, who's a decent footballer. Teddy Alderton, who's in goal for uh, the Lowry Legends this afternoon. Extenders start, there's Simon Webb and uh, Kem from Love Island. Jeff Brazier as well, TV presenter these days, Alex Beattie's there. And there's the uh, Katie Price and, uh, and, and her assistant. See Roy Evans in an Everton top. I spoke to him before and um, echoed the thought that he looked really good, didn't he? You know, for all of his time in the in, at the other side of the city with his uh, Liverpool badge, he really did suit the Everton badge today. And um, you know, it, it was something he was trying to hide. It was something he was uh, trying to cover up. And it honestly, looked like he was patting, the, patting his heart over the badge at one point, which I did point out. Don't do that out there on the on the pitch. That might not go unnoticed. But uh, it's great to see Roy giving up his time, even though he's, as we said, he's from the other side of the city. It shows that uh, things like this trans tra transcend both, both uh, sides mm. of the city. Absolutely. Here's Adam Woody, it's Ian Beale. I'll tell you what, he'll need that Liverpool T-shirt under his Everton top this afternoon. And Sam Bailey, fair play to Sam Bailey as well, a great sport turning out to play here this afternoon. And there's two former X Factor winners in a warm embrace. Lee Latchford Evans, who is an Evertonian, and John Fenley, who you'll recognise from Soccer A. The formalities are just about done. There will be a period of applause as we remember the uh, little hero whose legacy will stretch beyond this afternoon's game, the Bradley Lowry Foundation. Bitterly cold day here on Merseyside. Mark Halsey just calling the uh, the players together for the period of applause. Well, Shane Ward was trying to trek forward as uh, captain there, Ozzy, and I think Alan Stubbs went, whoa, 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 you remember your place. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan did enjoy being captain he here, and uh, the, the opportunity to get in that centre circle and do it all over again was a bit too much for him to resist, and uh, for your luck, Shane Ward's just apologising to him now for that misunderstanding. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Back Today's match is in his honour. There will now be a period of applause for Bradley that will begin and end on the referee's whistle.
He really was a special little guy, wasn't he, Bradley Lowry? And we are nearly ready to go. Have you played in many or any pro celebrity games of football, Liam? I haven't. Uh, this was a, the first one that, that, that's come along since I've retired from playing football myself. And unfortunately, I picked up an injury at a trampoline park with the kids <laughs> and uh, unable to be out there today, which is disappointing. Um, and I managed to, to, to be up here with you to do the next best thing. Well, the countdown was underway. We got closer to the countdown, and then Mark Halsey had to uh, uncheck his watch with the lines, but it looks like that. I think he's uh, trying to throw his importance mm. back to the, the Premier League days there. <laughs> Peter Reid's not overly impressed, that's for sure. He's just making sure that both sides are 11 aside. I'm looking forward to seeing Graeme Stewart in action this afternoon. I don't think he started. Graeme Stewart's not in the starting 11, which is a bit of a disappointment. There's Stephen Graham. Tubes. You don't often play a football match in the background of music, do you? <laughs> it's the first time I've been here when there's, uh, there's been music on during the game, Darren, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if it all adds to the atmosphere and the, the crowd can, can, can immerse themselves more in the game, then, you know, that's fine with us. Well, Dan Osborne there just got himself the uh, first attempt on goal. Pulled it well, well wide. Sam and Webb lets it run through, and it's a really good challenge by Jeff Grazier. There's... Uh, Soccer AM's tubes back to Alan Stubbs. Oh, good footwork by Alan Stubbs and completely lost MC Harvey. MC Harvey won't be pleased with that. Jeff Frazier tries to slot it through, but the move breaks down and Lowry's legends can come forward with the Love Island's Chris Hughes, but the offside flag is up on the far side. Liam Gatsby, a little bit of lack of concentration from the, uh, the Towie star. Lineman on this near side raises his flag. Fair play to Mark Halsey, by the way. He um, obviously any cancer charity, as he is close to his heart because he has suffered from it. So is his uh, his charming good lady wife as well. But he was there at the game for Grenfell as well yesterday. So he's put a shift in this weekend, Mark. He has. He's um, he's such a nice fella. You know, I remember when he went through the um, the fight himself, and you know, trying to show him support. But you know, he, he's such a strong man that, that that he managed to get through. And now he's he's out the other side. He's prepared to give up yeah. so much time. Um, it, it's great to see. Shane Ward has possession, plays it in field to Tubes. Dan Osborne challenging for the ball with the Callum Best. Now then, chance on this near side for Adam Woodyard, who's trying to get goals out of the full-back, uh, Ray Quinn, but just couldn't manage it. And Locksmith tidies up and plays it back to Callum Best. His old man could kick a ball about, couldn't he? He certainly could. What a player he was. And... Um... It's interesting watching Callum playing today. He's decided he's a centre half now, yeah. far cry from what his father was. But uh, he looks like he's got the phys physical attributes mm. for it. The player his dad was, of course, a little bit before our time, but he graced Goodison Park many, many times in the colours of Manchester United. Holly Mers edging the penalty area, goes for goal, good save by Terry Alderton. But uh, I watched Holly Mers on Soccer AM a week or so ago, and he, he can kick a ball, can't he? Well, I did soccer aim with him uh, during the last season, at end of last season, and he kept on telling me what a wicked right foot he's got, and he was desperate to uh, <laughs> desperate to show me uh, on that occasion, in the, you know, in the car park, in the, in the shootout, and, you know, the first opportunity he got today, he couldn't wait to pull the trigger, and it was a great strike and a, and a good save. Decent save by the uh, East Enders star Terry Alderton. And it's a lively little start of the game, isn't it? I suppose the excitement's for the celebrities, the non-players, if you like, of being out there, the adrenaline will keep them going, but they'll tire before the end. Won't they? Yeah, I'm looking round at a couple of them already. Look like they're gasping for breath, and we're only <laughs> only three minutes and 13 <laughs> seconds into the game. But you know, let's hope that the, that the action continues. The, you know, an early shot there from Ollie Mers caused a good uh, force, a good save out of the Dan goalkeeper. Osborne has sprung the offside trap, but it's a poor cross intercepted by uh, Callum Best, and then uh, Jamie O'Hara, who's played at Goodison many times before. Break the move down. Here's Alex Ray, the former Sunderland midfielder. Spots a little bit of space, runs into it. He'll shoot from here. Alex Ray. Oh, he wasn't far away. Oh, it was a good strike. Good, good strike, and he travelled. He was allowed to travel so far with the ball. Um, you know, I think that's what happens in these charity mm. matches. People don't want to commit themselves, and 
Um, you know, you don't want to overly see too many tackles, and he was allowed to get within striking distance. And you know, former players can still hit the ball, as we spoke about Alan Stubbs and Tony Hibbert before. And can't give them their opportunity to shoot. There's Oli Mayers, Locksmith is toiling, he's not going to get anywhere near him. Oli Mayers tries to flick it wide towards Adam Woodyard, but uh, it wasn't the best ball from Oli Mayers. It wasn't, it was actually a terrific little run from, from Adam Woodyard. It he, was, he, yeah. he peeled off, got himself in the space, and um, I don't know if Oli Mayers thought Adam Woodyard had a yard or two more pace. <laughs> or oh, he, he's into so he intercepted the clearance then, but he gets it back. Yeah, I don't know if he thought he had a yard or two more pace, or it was just a really poor pass from Oli Mayers, but... I think um, it was you know, a ball pass. I, I wouldn't have thought he'd be surprised by any <laughs> lack of pace from Adam Woodyard, to be honest. <laughs> Good bit of skill in the midfield area by Jamie O'Hara. Feeds it down the left-hand side towards MC Harvey. Closed down by Jeff Brazier. Back it goes to Jamie O'Hara, and again, he moves into the space. Plays it square. Gets it back again, Jamie O'Hara, and opens the scoring at Goodison Park for Lowry's Legends with five minutes on the clock. Linked up well with Jez Lynch, who uh, is a superb footballer in the freestyle variety when there's nobody around him, but he also did really, really well there. And Jamie O'Hara, one of the former professional players, scores the first goal of the afternoon. Talk us through this one, Leon. Yeah, it was a terrific goal. Jamie O'Hara's obviously just... Just being allowed to step up with the ball, and and then you know he's, he's faced up tubes. Thought I, I can I can show you which way which way to do a step over. It. Threw two steps in, little one two around him. Great great weighted pass back to him, and you know he's managed to pass it through the goalkeeper's legs. And got to be honest, if that was a goalkeeper I was playing with, I'd have given him a bit of abuse for that. But <laughs> I think the goalkeeper's unlucky on this occasion. Here's Kem carrying the ball forward. Good run by Kem. Good ball as well. Here's Adam Woodyard who. Uh, a lack of pace just got exposed a little bit there by Ray Quinn. Now it's with Alex Ray. Is that Adam Woodyard's pace again letting him down? <laughs> <laughs> Alex Ray plays it forward, but it's uh, into the arms of Gavin Ramwan. Stubbs, he won't want to lose this, will he? No, and he's just given a really poor, poor pass goal. away, and you know, I'll be. I'll be, I'll be giving him criticisms and uh, <laughs> advice after the game and how to improve himself. Uh, but no, he won't. He's such a competitive man. Still, it doesn't matter what uh, what form that game takes up. You, you know, you you, be, you become a professional because you don't want to lose as yeah, much as yeah. anything. You have a real pride about winning. So you know, those professionals that are out there today, they're out there to enjoy themselves, give the time for the charity. But none of them will want to come off the pitch as a loser. Dan Osborne runs into Alex Ray. Then Lynch finds Ray again. Good footwork by Alex Ray, drills it forward, fizzes it into Gatsby. Took a good touch there, he was just unfortunate, mm. it was uh, it was a really ball, it was a really tough ball to control and, and he did okay, he was just unfortunate, it just got a little bit far away from him. Long raking ball there from that man Jeff Brazier, drifted out of play, it's a goal kick for the Lowry Legends, Bradley's Blues nil. The Lowry Legends won. I don't know if it's the goal, Darren, or. Chance down the right hand side. Lynch gets into the penalty area, pulls it back, and it's well blocked by yeah, Jeff Brazier. I don't know if it's the goal or whether Sunderland have just settled into a say Sunderland, the um, Lowry Legends, beg your pardon, have settled into a rhythm quite early and they're passing the ball around mm. really well now. Um, Bradley's Blues are, are just giving the ball away a little bit too much at, at the moment and given Lowry Legends a real chance to pass that ball around. Chance inside the penalty area, Kem. Blasts it to safety. Lee Latchford Evans over hits the pass towards Oli Mers, the uh, former step singer, putting too much pressure on the sideways pass, and it's a throw in for Lowry's Legends. Here's Kemp, forward to tubes, intercepted by Alex Ray, and again he sees the space and carries it forward, little side step to get rid of Alan Stubbs. Oh. Well, that was a good save, that by Gavin. It was a run one. Fantastic save. Uh, you know, Alex Ray again being allowed to run far too, too far up the pitch. 
found himself one on one with the centre half of Everton. The midfield were nowhere to be seen, and you know Alan Stubbs just couldn't just stop him getting this shot away. And it was a terrific little good fingertip save. save in the end. Really good fingertip save. Corner on the right hand side, which MC Harvey will take. It's a low one into Locksmith. Back it goes into the penalty area, and Ray Quinn. Uh, that might have been all right in the pro celebrity game at Twickenham, but <laughs> no trouble to the goalkeeper. to Lee Latchford Evans, good turn by Lee Latchford Evans, good ball as well to Oli Mers now, a bit of space for the Blues, Oli Mers though picks out the wrong pass, it's picked up by Dan Osborne, Osborne looking for Mers again, it's intercepted, it's out of play on this near side, throw in, but uh, half an opening does he? Yeah, and it started with great skill from Lee Latchford Evans in the middle of the park, he, he did a, a little twist and a step over and a drag back and, you know, really lost his man and, and that started the move and unfortunately, you know, Ollie Bears wasn't quite being able to release by Dan Osborne on that occasion. It was a great read by uh, by Ray Quinn, who, who, who read it really well and drove it to midfield. Throw in for Lowry's Legends on this near side. Callum Best. Right footed up the channels. Alan Stubbs is underneath it. Nice first touch by Alan Stubbs. Back to the goalkeeper, never lose it, do you? Great skill, that is so difficult to do, the ball coming over the top of your head, you're twisting round and, you know, you have to take your eyes off it for a moment and and he was a full stretch as well, which is difficult as you've, as you've retired and you get a little bit older and he, he still managed to bring the ball down instantly with just a little touch and, uh, you know, again, I reiterate, you, you might lose your legs but you don't lose your skill. Here's Adam Woodyard, gives the ball away. Now, this time he's away, MC Harvey, he timed his run, Jeff Brazier coming across to check his progress, but MC Harvey gets the ball into the penalty area, just too high to pick out Liam Gatsby on this right-hand side. Oh, that was a great run by uh, MC Harvey, though, he, he went in three or four yards and Simon Webb got sucked right into his movements and he spun in behind him and, and Simon Webb couldn't get near him and Jeff Brazier did well to come and cover and, you know, the attack fizzled out. ball from the goal scorer O'Hara to pick out MC Harvey again and he fizzes the ball across the face of the goal Alan Stubbs concedes a corner and Alan Stubbs couldn't do anything else other than concede a corner no he did really well and uh, you know I think that's um, become a lot easier to do since he's retired that control on the belly one that he just showed there he, he just let it hit his belly cushioned it out of the pitch and uh, as I said, I don't think it could do that as well a few years back. <laughs> Cross come over from MC Harvey, cushion it, it fizzed into the Gladys Street. Another corner, another short routine. Ray Quinn leaves it for Jamie O'Hara, who goes for goal again and finds the goal again. Second goal of the game for Jamie O'Hara. The goalkeeper won't be pleased about it, but it's Blues nil. The Legends 2. Oh, watching this back, it's a great strike from Jamie O'Hara, but Tubes lets him shoot from what must be 20 yards, we're talking about a, a professional footballer on his left foot, and Tubes just lets him shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and Come on, Tubes. Is it Lee Latchford Evans up there as well, and neither of them put, put any real pressure on the shot, and, yeah, OK, it was a goalkeeping error, we, we're, we're all aware of that, but, um, you know, you've got to put a bit more pressure on, a, on an extra pro when he's in and around the goal. Mm. But a great goal, great to see a goal. That's two goals the crowd have been treated to already. And, yeah. you know, now we just hope that uh, Bradley's Blues join in the, the action. Alan Stubbs. Tony Hibbert and Peter Reid are warming up on the far side as the ball is crossed into the penalty area again. MC Harvey. Picks it up, Simon Webb goes across to stop him, MC Harvey dances past him. <laughs> it's a good, strong challenge by Alan Stubbs, and I tell you what, he wasn't going to lose that one, was he? No, it was a great tackle by Alan Stubbs, and, you know, talking about how competitive, I think I mentioned that you don't really see tackles of that, you know, that, that force in, in these type of games, but <laughs> Stubbs is determined not to lose this, but it started with a great bit of skill from, from MC Harvey. Poor control by Jeff Brazier, but he 
gets the chance to redeem himself. Good interception from Callum Best. Carries the ball forward. Needs a bit of space for a cross. It's a low centre, it's all along the ground and it's out of play. He's having a good afternoon so far, Callum mm. Best. Um, you know, what, about, what about your mate Stubbsy? <laughs> what a challenge that was. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's breathing hard. He will have enjoyed this, though. He will have really enjoyed that. <laughs> that was his bread and butter when he played. He loved making them type of tackles. And, uh, you know, I, I think he might need a rest in a minute or two, though. <laughs> Chris Hughes from uh, Love Island. Felt the wrath of that one. Here's Lynch, the freestyler, football freestyler. Absolutely amazing football skills he's got, by the way. Here's Adam Woodyard sprinting after it down this left-hand side. I think, at, I think at the moment Blues, uh, Bradley's Blues are struggling to get out because they keep yeah. putting balls down the channel for poor Adam Woodyard to chase. <laughs> and he is trying his, his utmost to get on the end of these, but, you know, his pace probably isn't his forte at the moment. And, and Ray Quinn and, and Callum Best are, are sweeping everything up at the mm. moment. He's, uh, he's ploughing a lone furrow there, Adam Budget, isn't it? I have a feeling uh, he may well be withdrawn shortly. He's, uh, the lone striker role isn't really suiting him, is it? No, but he's uh, not through lack of effort. No, he's put a shift in, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, put, he's putting a shift in. He's not really getting rewarded for it. The, uh, the balls to him could be a lot better, as we showed with that one and the Ollie Mayers one earlier. Mm. So uh, he, he does need a little bit of help. There's Roy Evans there, just uh, turning to Katie Price for some... Tactical advice, I suppose. Right, first substitution. Peter Reid is on to replace Lee Latchford Evans. And I'll tell you what, Lee Evans, formerly of Steps, is a big Evertonian. He'll be delighted to give way for Peter Reid. Oh, he'll be telling that story in the pub and to his yeah. family and to everyone who listened for years that uh, Peter Reid replaced him as a substitute. And I'm looking forward to seeing Peter play. I haven't seen him for a while. I'm sure he'll be as competitive as ever. Tony Hibberts will also be able to tell people in the pub that he came on for Ian Beale. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Hibbo. The familiar hands tucked into the sleeve of his top. Adam Woodyard of East Enders, a great sport, makes way. I'll, I'll say this, he's come on for Adam Woodyard. I'll be surprised if he goes straight up front. <laughs> I would love it if he did, though. Oh, we're seeing all sorts of tricks now. Mm. Stephen Green throwing back heels out. <laughs> Loving that. Simon Webb. Ollie Mayers Stephen back to Stephen Gray and Beggy Park. <laughs> oh, good skill by Stubbsy, but then he stumbles and just manages to regain his footing. Alex Ray inter intercepts the clearance and it's offside again. And MC Harvey. Uh, We'll look along the line towards the linesman quizzically, but uh, he's got to time his runs better, hasn't he? He does, and, you know, when you're not playing... When you're playing against quality defenders like Alan Stubbs and they can see the run, you know, he made that run from from, from a couple of yards deeper than, than he should, and Alan Stubbs could see it coming and just give him enough time to step up. Alex Ray does well. Finds Locksmith. Tony Hibbert trying to get goal side the locksmith who couldn't do so. Now then, bit of space for Hughes. Left-hand side of the penalty area, real chance for Lowry's legends. Must be, no, good save, very good save. Really good save. It was Josh Cuthbert from uh, Union J with the efforts, and it was a really good save by Gavin Ramwan, who's uh, redeemed himself, has he? Yeah, I mean, you know, he made a, a, a slight error, should we say, for, for the second <laughs> goal. Be kind as we can, but, uh, you know, it's great when you when, when you see people making <laughs> saves like that, taking part in the game, making big moments for their team, and, uh, you know, he'll be pleased with that when he's talking about the game later. <laughs> Michael Gray, challenged by uh, 
Peter Reid, it was a heavy challenge. Peter Reid, of course, was Michael Gray's manager at Sunderland for a time. <laughs> he was, and I think there was no love lost in, no. the, in that <laughs> conversation. I think Mickey's having a little smile there that, that Reedy didn't manage to catch him properly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Peter loves to tackle. He loves to, to, to leave a bit of it on people, always in a, in a light-hearted way. But, you know, I think he'll probably catch someone before he has to go off. Absolutely. There's Chirps. Back to Alan Stubbs. Stephen Graham. Back to Peter Reid. Infield to Shane Ward. Look at the space on the right hand side for Stephen Graham, but not spotted his. Tony Hibbert, shoot, shout the crowd. You were right, Ozzy. Didn't yeah. take long. Yeah, I said the moment he uh, gets into the opposition half with the ball, he'd be asked to shoot, but he's obviously let the crowd down on that occasion. Jamie O'Hara clips it to the Left hand side, well taken by Hughes. He's quick, isn't he? Oh, he is. He's, he's away from Simon he's Webb. Just left Simon, mm. Simon Webb on the halfway line. <laughs> Hughes picks out Cuthbert. Back to MC Harvey. And Simon Webb's having a pretty torrid time <laughs> over there. And Jeff Brazier is uh, sized down by MC Harvey. That'll be a free kick. First substitutions well peter reed has for bradley's blues this afternoon we've got adam and we've got lee here i tell you what great to be out there though isn't it oh, it was fantastic it's been a lot of good support from the crowd as well it's been very enjoyable so far i just wish the score was a little bit different you said you wished they'd have scored while you're on you said i'm going to be fuming now didn't you sorry you said i'm going to be fuming if they score now i've come off no he's, he's just said that you've you're the only person who's uh, got a shot on target well, no, Ollie, Ollie had, a, had the first shot on target, I had the second, so I'll dine out on that one. For and Lee, of course, you are a lifelong blue. What's it like being out there playing on the Hallow turf for Goodison? Oh, it's great, it's amazing. Obviously, being grown up since I was a little kid, coming over, watching the teams all the way through. It's not many people that can say they could be subbed by Reedy, is it? So I'm happy with that. Of course, and Adam, you've hit our. Oh, here we go. Got? Oh, he couldn't help himself. It's been a bit different for me. I've had to come across Stanley Park. Well, Adam, you've, uh, you've got a bit of a stick, a bit of stick this afternoon saying that you're playing in their dock cotton slippers. So uh, I think you need to change your boots before you go back on. Well, no, no I can't change my boots. I've got justice for the 96 on them as well. All right, um, fair enough. No, look, cancer's got no colours, so it doesn't matter who you support, it's about coming together and helping. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're the Liverpool support, the Everton support, or Man United, Man City, Arsenal, Spurs, it, it's just about getting behind something together. That's what it is. Fantastic. We hope to see you both back on the pitch very soon. We'll be back out there soon, don't worry. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Come on, let's get this score back round. Thank you. Right, just to let you know, substitutions. Two good sports. Lee Latchard Evans and uh, Adam Woodyard. 2-0. Bradley's Blues nil, the Lowry Legends 2. We're approaching the midway point of the first half, and I would suggest, Ozzy, that the 2 0 scoreline is probably just about a fair reflection of the, the play so far. Yeah, to be honest, if, if anything, it could be three or four. You know, mm. Bradley's Blues haven't, haven't done enough around the goal. There's not been a, a, any real shots. I mean, Ollie Mers had one in the first five minutes, but other than that, there's been there's been nothing for Terry Alderton to do in the in the Lowry Legends goal. So uh, you know they'll they'll have to start competing more at that end of the pitch. Get Graham Stewart on, surely that's the answer, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure that's the answer, uh, but it would be good to see Graham out there on the pitch and to see what he can do. It's a nice ball from MC Harvey. Picks out Jamie O'Hara, who scored the two goals so far, but it's intercepted by. Jeff Brazier, and he can bring it away. Feed it forward to Oli Mers on the right hand side, crosses the halfway line. Stephen Graham makes a run. Dan Osborne fills the space. Right hand side of the penalty area. Osborne back to Stephen Graham, just couldn't reach it. Tubes can't get there. And then uh, Locksmith brings it away. Good play. It was, and they found themselves 3v2 in that situation, mm. and you know, just a, a sloppy pass, couldn't make the most of it. But then what that brings is, is counter attacking at the other end, like this. It's like the Alamo here, the red and white striped shares have got plenty of players over. One of them is MC Harvey, but his shot is blocked by Alan Stubbs. Cuthbert finds Jamie O'Hara, who's on a hat trick, tries to chip the keeper, and wasn't far away. Oh, still 2-0. Unlucky from Jamie O'Hara, just showing his class there. That, that, that left foot is still magic wand-like, um, and he was unlucky with the chip. But you just look, you know, in, in, in watching these games, they become so end-to-end, -end and 
Um, you know, the, the Bradley Blues team there had four players back and three of them were the ex-professionals and, and all the celebrities on the other end of the pitch. Goal hanging, shall we say, yeah. after a goal. Desperate to score. There's Locksmith. To Lynch. MC Harvey just needs to help it on one more and does so to find uh, Chris Hughes. Good ball in, but uh, Tony Hibbert and Alan Stubbs, as they have done many, many times in the Royal Blue Jersey of Everton, combined to tidy it up. And Hughes plays a great ball forward towards Kemp. Nice first touch as well. Callum Best comes across the challenge. Kemp shrugs him off. He's going to go for goal, and he curls it. It wasn't too far away. Lovely bit of football. Oh, it was a lucky. Yeah, it was a great run from him. Showed real athleticism, and it was a good ball from Tube. Played him in. He's, he's twisted inside Callum Best and, and just killed his shot wide of the far post. He did have options in the middle of the pitch to play. Um, a couple, of, a bit of an overload for the Bradley Blues uh, team there. Oli Mears was joining, but he went for the shot, and you know he was unlucky. Can't blame him for going for goal, can you? Well, his luck's in. He's just won his. Uh, <laughs> he's just won the program he's been on. He's. <coughs> I think it involves being with a partner at the end of it. So I think he thinks his luck's <laughs> in at the moment. Well, he's been brought back. I think the, uh, we need a new ball, do we? It's been booted into the crowd by Alan Stubbs. And now we go again. Yeah, that's a nice touch. You know, that that's a bit of memorabilia for someone mm. to keep. He's realised the ball isn't. Probably, you know, losing a bit of air and, you know, someone in the crowd can have it. Nice day. There you go. Chris Hughes again sprints past Simon Webb, but uh, Alan Stubbs was there to snuff out the danger. Read it well. There's Ollie Mears. Tubes. Back to Ollie Mears again. On to Shane Ward. Decent football. Ollie Mears picks it up again. Leading the charge, leading by example, Ollie Mears. Reaches the edge of the penalty area. Men over here. Dan Osborne tries to flick it, goes for goal. Struck it well enough, but straight to the keeper, Leon. Yeah, and it's, there's, there's been a couple of shots that were struck that well. That was a really good strike from Osborne there, but it was just straight to the keeper, just made it a little bit easy for him. Yeah, it got through the legs, and I think if that wasn't straight at the goalkeeper, then, then it would have been a, an easy goal. It would have been very difficult for the <coughs> goalkeeper to save, but unfortunately, on this occasion, we're straight out. Some substitutions here. Well, we, we are joined by our moment. manager and assistant manager, Katie Price and Roy Evans. 2 nil lead, how does it feel? Well, clearly my team is great on the form today, and uh, well done to Jamie, two goals in. Well, Katie got the tactics right, obviously she's gone the right way with the attacks and we've got behind their defence, and so far the manager's done a great job. Roy, have you had to give anyone the hair dry treatment yet? No, no, not so far. So far we've been uh, very solid. Uh, we've looked better side and uh, obviously make a few changes and try and keep it that way fantastic what about you Katie you're not thinking about maybe going out there yourself and perhaps running out there not today I'm uh, washing my hair <laughs> <laughs> let's throw back to where Graham with some substitutes we got a couple of substitutions for Bradley Blues coming off there's the moment we've been waiting for the diamond is on to replace Shane Ward and Soccer AM's John Fenley has replaced Dan Osborne. He's really wearing that shirt today, isn't he? <laughs> I think the diamond is really wearing it. <laughs> Alan Stubbs drills the ball wide towards Tony Hibbert, who heads it in field towards Ken, but Locksmith's there again. He's had a useful first half. Commentator's curse gives it straight to John Fenley. Peter Reid decides not to give it to Graham Stewart. Tony Hibbert, now then, inside the penalty area. Tony Hibbert still going. Back to John Fenley, who's in support. Peter Reid, no less. Peter Reid slots it forward towards Ollie Mers. Ollie Mers wins a corner, does he? Yes, he does. Corner on the right hand side. Again, just, just half an opening there, Ozzy. Yeah, believe it or not, it was Tony Hibbert driving into yeah. the box with the ball. And yeah, we haven't said that very often over the, the course of the last 15 years. <laughs> um, but you know, a little bit of a little bit of pace to the attack and and, Blue, and Bradley's Blues got an effort on goal. Decent ball in from Ollie Merce. Controlled on the edge of the box by Tony Hibbert, but not controlled well enough. And then Graham Stewart drags back Lynch. Play on, says the referee. I think that was a sympathy vote, wasn't it, from Mark Halsey? Because it certainly looked like a foul by Graham Stewart. Yeah, I think he's took one look at Graham Stewart and thought he's going to have to help him out over the course of the afternoon. Here goes uh, MC Harvey. Look at the space inside the penalty area. It must be a third goal. Well put away by Jimmy Constable. <laughs> 
the former 9-1-1 band member finds the back of the net. And uh, the Blues were just undone. Once again, the pace down the left-hand side, too much for uh, the former Blue band member, Simon Webb. Yeah, he's had a tough afternoon. MC Harvey's drifted over in behind Simon Webb as often as he can. I don't know if he, he's played against him before, but he seems to realise he's, he's got him for pace. And, you know, the Bradley's Blues were caught out. Tony Hibbert tried to get back, but it was a great finish by... Mm, good finish. By 9-1-1's Jimmy. Uh, right into the top corner. Yeah, owned his body up and placed it past the keeper, didn't he? Yeah, Ray Quinn seemed to enjoy it there as well. <laughs> really good finish. No chance for the goalkeeper. Here he is, Jimmy Constable. And it is 3-0. And that's why Lowry's Legends manager, Katie Price, has had the luxury of introducing number 18, Sam Bailey, to the game. So, Katie... 3-0 up now, what are your thoughts on it, what it's going to be like at half-time, your half-time team talk? Well, I think they're doing very well, actually, and, um, yeah, this, if we keep it this way, we'll be winning, wouldn't we? And uh, Jimmy, little legs, he just scored a goal, well done, Jimmy. And it's nice to see Sam Bailey, a lady going on the pitch, um, really enjoys her football, really enthusiastic about it and I hope she does really well. A lot of people are saying Sam's a bit of a secret weapon for you two, saying that she merely knows how to play the game and she could be running rings around these fellas, is that right? She is amazing at playing, you watch. Don't ever underestimate us women. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to let you get back to your team because we don't, you've got your 3-0 lead now. We don't want you losing that. We'll catch up with you in the second half. And thanks so much again for being here today and supporting the Bradley Lowry Foundation. Oh, pleasure. Thank you. Don't missed any goals, says uh, Kemp. Shot's blocked and it'll break for Peter Reid, who jogs after it. Plays it in field to Tony Hibbert. First hand ball to Ollie Mers. Shapes to shoot, but then tries to flick it wide, and Sam Bailey gets a little touch on it. Wind it goes to Stephen Graham. Has a little look up, steadies himself, puts the ball into the penalty, and it's a decent ball. That's got to be a penalty <laughs> all day long. Alex Ray <laughs> grabbed Fenners from Soccer AM and uh, that was a fairly easy decision to make. Yeah, they're laughing about it. I think there was a little bit of a talk going on before the cross came in and, um, you know, I, I think Fenners just, just went and challenged for the ball and Alex Ray, you know, I think this was on the street. You know, I think the police, the police would get called in. It was, uh, you know, a definite penalty. Made it easy for the referee and... Hopefully, Bradley's Blues can get on the score sheet. Oli Mers at the park end with his right foot. Here we go. Drills it into the bottom corner. And it's Bradley's Blues 1, the Lowry Legends 3. Oli Mers on the score sheet. And that's what the young kids wanted to see. Absolutely. You know, we've, we've, we've got some great celebrities, some, some top ex pros on the pitch, but quite a lot of the kids. Kids these days know that the local, sorry, the, the new celebrities on the block, your singers and, and stuff. So for them to be able to, to cheer on Oli Mers as he strikes this really well into the, the bottom of the goal, you know, the kids will be delighted to cheer on Good penalty that, Ozzy, wasn't it? Better than any I've ever took, that's for sure, because <laughs> it hit the back of the net. <laughs> well, Tom Sellers is uh, coming on. And uh, here comes Che Chesterman to replace Locksmith, and there's Che Chesterman. Che Chesterman is an X Factor contestant. Still got his glasses on. <laughs> You better keep away from Peter Reid, then. <laughs> <laughs> There's Simon Webb. Brazier. Fenners tries to lay it back to Graham Stewart, but uh, it's intercepted. Jamie O'Hara finds MC Harvey. So solid crew, of course, where he made his name. Jamie O'Hara again. Curls into the penalty area. Sam Bailey taking on Tony Hibbert. Goes for goal. Hibbert's got to close here down better. He does, I'll be giving him some <laughs> stick later. Yeah, that's for sure. 
We're with us, uh, pitch side, we've got Corrie legend Shay Ward. What's it, like? What's it like for you out there? Give me another 50 years, I'll hopefully be a legend. Well, it's only two years in, mate. <laughs> Now then, there's just been an all-important penalty. What do you make of that first stand from the sidelines? It's about time. Pretty um, dirty players, to be honest, especially Harvey. MC Harvey is just a right dirty player. Always offside, always in the mood. Um, no, it's good. I mean, it's, I would say it's quite even at the minute, but it's not. <laughs> and we're just going to cut to grain for some substitutions. Right, we've got a couple of substitutions for the Bradley Blues. Can we go for the three? Ken makes way, and uh, on comes Adam Smith, better known as uh, Frankie Fryer on Soccer AM. You'll have, you'll have worked with him, Ozzy. Yeah, I've done a couple of uh, appearances with him, a couple of skits, I think, on the show mm. as well. Uh, great people on that show, yeah. so much for a laugh, and, um, you know, it's about enjoy, enjoying your work. Here's MC Harvey for... Lowry's Legends finds Sam Bailey, Tony Hibbers again, a little bit, sl little bit slow to get across, but he intercepts the centre on that occasion, plays it back to Jeff Yeah, Bracey. he was lucky, and, you know, I think we're <laughs> going to have to have a chat at half-time, me and Hibbo, about his <coughs> performance since he's come on. No, but, uh, you know, we're after efforts on goal, we're after crosses into the box, and, and Sam Bailey's done great since she's come on, that's, that's two, twice she's, uh, she's done something exciting, one, one shot on goal and one cross. Choose finds Frankie Fry. It's a great ball into the penalty area, and it must be a goal. Oh, no conviction really in the header from uh, the East Enders actor Matt Lipinskis, because that was better than half chance, Ozzy. Oh, great a ball. Fantastic ball from uh, Frankie Fryer. From Frankie, yeah, and he just allowed the ball to bounce yeah. when it came over, and he needed to mm. go and meet it a little bit lower. And you know, he ended up getting a decent header in, but it made the, the, the keeper make an easy, easy save. Tony Hibbert puts the ball back into the penalty area, headed away by Callum Best. Graham Stewart picks it up for the Blues, finds Frankie Fryer, goes for goal, takes deflection, spins in the air, Oli Mers is underneath it, gives it away though, Lynch, now then, it's two on two, MC Harvey, got Jamie O'Hara with him. There's Lynch again, flicks it back to O'Hara. O'Hara tries a bit of skill, gets it all wrong. It's all getting a bit serious here in the dugout now, isn't it, Shane? I'll tell you what, what are you getting a bit nervous now? I am, because I can see us getting another goal before half-time, especially if Lekinskis or number 20, Smith, get on the ball. What do you make of uh, Peter Reid and, uh, great, and uh, Ian Snowden, your, uh, your managers? Legend, absolute legend. I passed the ball and I'm not still chuffed a bit. <laughs> I get a one-two. Well, oh! Come on, Simon. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Obviously, you may be getting back on the pitch at some point again later, right now. Okay, crowd, are you ready? Oggy, oggy, oggy! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so thank much. Right, we've got a special substitution. There was a chance there for Sam Webb, was he, wasn't it? He did the hard part, dribbled his way into a good position and then uh, rather rushed the finish. He did great, you know, he's had a, he's had a torrid afternoon chasing uh, MC Harvey, but he showed great quality getting into the opposition's box there and was unlucky when he, he couldn't quite get a shot away. Sam, Har uh, Sam Bailey rather putting a... Not a decent cross in there, but intercepted that time by Alan Stubbs. Good challenge by Lipinskis. Oh, Peter Reid sold Alan Stubbs short there. MC Harvey picks it up. Reid will be fuming if this ends up in a goal. It still might. Breaks the cuff, but brings it forward to one of the substitutes, Tom Sellers. And Peter Reid is there for the Blues. Back and field to Alan Stubbs. <laughs> Stubbs, he does well again. Yeah, he's top class. He's still, he, he's still got that moments of magic. But the, going back to Peter Reid's pass, the luck he gave Alan Stubbs <laughs> when he made that back pass. Peter Reid sold Alan Stubbs short and looked at <laughs> Alan like it was his fault. And, you know, that, that's an art in itself, Peter's, Absolutely. Peter's top format. Oh, he's perfected that. Here's Ollie Mears on the halfway line. 
Frankie Fry attempts his run down the right hand side. Callum Best sprinting across to make a challenge. Frankie Fry gets to the first, puts an early ball in. Kapinskis, great chance for Kapinskis. He's put it wide. Look at Graham Stewart inside the penalty area on his own. Kapinskis, you couldn't blame him for going himself, but he puts it wide. No, he and he's, he's found himself in some great positions in the box. Uh, Frankie Fry has, has really brought the game alive for the mm. for Bradley's Blues, and he's getting down this right hand side. He's hobbling a bit at the moment, which is worrying, but he puts some great balls in the box. Bradley's boots needs to make more advantage, take more advantage of it. Sam Bailey trying to kick the ball in on this right hand side, can't do so. Out of play it goes. But a good sport. Fair play to Sam Bailey, Snod. Uh, Snod's on Ely said this. This <laughs> <laughs> it? rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie O'Hara has scored two goals, he's coming off. And coming on is number 15, Jay James, another X Factor contestant, who was on the X Factor in 2014, uh, but didn't win it. <laughs> An interesting fact. <laughs> it's Fenners. It's not a bad ball. Yes, it is. Sorry, he's overhit that completely, and it's out for a goal kick. John right. Fenley, Soccer AM. I suppose any mistakes that the Soccer AM boys make today will be repeated on the show, was it, at some point? I would hope so. <laughs> um, especially if one of them falls over the ball or does something really embarrassing. But, uh, you know, they haven't done that so far. You know, that ball was over here. There's some real zip to the grass now. It's still raining. It's it's that fine rain that sucks you through. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's really put a zip on the turf. And, and every pass is now going to be really, really careful and really exact. A couple of substitutions for both sides. Locksmith is back on. Simon Webb's gone off there. I think Adam Woodie might be poised to come back on shortly. Peter Reed's getting hooked here, has he? I think it was to do with that pass before because <laughs> he's, he's, just not, he's just not been on his game today, has Peter. No, but it looks like he's enjoyed himself, he's run down the pitch, made a couple of tackles and, uh, you know, I bet he's really enjoyed being out there on the pitch again. Off goes Peter Reid, actually looks a bit disgruntled getting hooked by his assistant manager Ian Snowden. Might have words at half-time. I think maybe Snodds is just feeling a little bit too much pressure on the line on his own there and needs, <laughs> needs Peter back to help him out. Jamie O'Hara, probably a man of the match so far. What's it like out there? <laughs> it's good, you know, it's competitive, the lads are doing well. Um, I had to start getting myself going because I think the first couple of times I touched it, I, I was thinking, Jesus, I'm making a fool of myself here. So, a couple of goals got me back in it. But yeah, it's good, it's great. Gonna get a hat trick? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, was, uh, I said to the keeper, I'm gonna do him from halfway, so expect a couple uh, long range efforts. Certainly are you are the man to watch, are you, this game? And to, ooh, look, uh, obviously scoring a brace, like you say, the first thing you said when you came over here was, I just want to get it back out and get another one. Is that the competitive side in you? You definitely want to win today? Yeah, I mean, uh, once you get out on the pitch, it's, uh, the competitive nature comes out on you, you know. Being a footballer, you, uh, you never lose that. And as soon as you're out on the pitch, whoever you're playing against, you want to win. And it's a fantastic group of people that you're playing. For you, who's your like biggest opposition player so far? Who do you think's one to watch? Um, I think Oli Mers has obviously got a bit, hasn't he? He's, uh, he's uh, showing that he can, can play football. And, um... Ray Quinn saying him in the corner there, look. <laughs> Ray Quinn's been their best player. <laughs> Well, thank you so much again, and we'll be keeping our eye on you. And when you do get back out on there, thank you for taking part in this an amazing event today. I mean, obviously for Bradley Lowry as well. No, it's an absolute Here we honor go, for it's me a great chance for Kapinskis. And, um, oh. I just want to thank everyone for coming out, everyone supporting. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure and an honor for me to play here uh, with such fantastic people. Well, it's an honor to have you here, isn't it, Liam? It is. Thanks, Jamie O'Hara. Chances at both ends then, Ozzy, in the last few minutes, and the corner kick which Graham Stewart will take. Awful, rubbish, Graham. <laughs> Get him off. <laughs> and uh, as per usual, from a Graham Stewart corner, 
Everton are defending. He's <laughs> <laughs> largely disappointed since, since he's come on as, uh, yeah. as, our, as our diamond, yeah. and uh, you know he needs to seriously book his ideas up. I think. <laughs> Here's Lynch, now he's put a bit of pace into the Larry Legend attack. Running with Jeff Brazier, plays it square to Chesterman. Leaves it for Constable. Must fashion an opportunity here, surely. And here is the fourth goal. Despite the uh, efforts of Jeff Brazier, the ball is at the back of the net. And Lowry's Legends lead by four goals to one in the 45th minute. It was a great goal, I mean, it's... They had a, an initial attack, they got slowed down and then they showed real patience and kept the ball in. Jess Lynch has probably been the best player on the pitch so mm. far in that first half and, um, you know, he, he provided both parts of that attack and, and a little clever ball at the end. Uh, it was well finished. Ball is at the back of the net. Lowry's Legends lead by four goals to one. Be interested to hear Peter Reid's half-time talk to his team. <laughs> um, how he's going to go about it with, you know, some pros, some some celebrities in his team. Does he try and put the arm round them or, or give them a roasting? I would think there's a Peter Reid <laughs> rollicking coming at half-time. The uh, the Peter Reid hairdryer will be out, I'm sure, in the home dressing room here. Yeah, he's 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 the Forty-five minutes time. are up. Mark Halsey puts his whistle to his lips. Close the half-time whistle. It's been a fairly easy game for Mark Halsey to referee thus far. I'm sure he wishes there was a bit more action for him to uh, react to. As Roy Evans and uh, that's Sean Reid, there, Peter Reid's brother, making his way down the tunnel. Bradley's Blues one, the Lowry's Legends four, and uh, just about right. Yeah, I'd say so. They've they've been really, really sharp in and around the. The Blues, Bradley's Blues goal, and you know, in 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 Jez and, and MC Harvey, they've they've had probably the two most lively players, um, and they've really they've really torn torn Bradley's Blues to shreds, especially down for Simon Website. He's had a tough tough afternoon so far. Mm. Half half time here at Goodison Park. It's Bradley's Blues one, the Lowry Legends four. And of course, thank you to every single one of you who's here. Made the team, made the time to come down here for uh, the Bradley Lowry Foundation and Everton in the community. You can text Brad17 plus your amount to 70070 if you want to support Bradley Lowry Foundation and Everton in the community. Now the team are coming back out again now, so we're just having a little chat over here within the crowd. Who have I got with us? Tell everyone your names. Leon, Stephen. And who are you supporting? Are you supporting Bradley's Blues or Lowry's Legends? Blues. Blues. Now, do you think they can turn it round now in the second half? What do you reckon? Defo. Of course we can. Definitely. We are just going to come round and have a little bit of a chat up here. Tell us, what do you think of the game today so far? It's been really good. It's been really, really good. And who, who's your star player out of the two teams? Chris. Definitely, yeah. So, have you got any prediction for how it's going to finish this afternoon? Oh, I don't know. You tell him, I don't know. Do you, think, do you think the Lowry's legends are going to keep the lead? Yeah, definitely. Go, Katie. <laughs> Fantastic. Liam, are you over in the crowd over there? I'm just in the dugout. <laughs> Should we have a word of the little guy? <laughs> Hiya, mate. Are you a blue? He's a red. Come on, Dad. Come closer. Come on. No, oh, Claire, I think we're going to have to cut back to you. OK, now, just walked out here. We've got Sam Bailey. We can just grab her for one minute. I tell you what, leading the way for the girls today, aren't you, Sam? How does it feel to just everyone? You're like the secret weapon of every team. Uh, well, I've played football for a few years, but I stopped playing to have kids. But to play football at this ground is, is just brilliant for me. So I'm doing it for the girls. Um, I want to be an ambassador for women's football. So um, we seem to be doing a lot better than the men at the moment. 
But um, yeah, I just want I just want to show that girls out there that want to play football that you can get on a pitch and play football and, and play with a load of guys, so it's all good. Well, you certainly have. Katie Price just said, she said you were the person to watch out for. You think they're going to score a few more this afternoon then? Do you think it's going to be a whitewash? Um, I think, we, yeah, I think we're on form for winning this game, to be honest. I think we're a better team. Um, I'm just going to hover on the right-hand side and just wait for the ball to come to me. If it doesn't, I'll just have a nice cup of tea in the corner. It's fine. But, uh, yeah, it's all good. It's really good to be here. It's for a great cause, so... And what was Katie's team talk at half-time like? Score goals. Just lots of goals. That was pretty much the team talk. Well, that's how you win a game, isn't it? Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Sam Bailey. Just absolutely brilliant. It appears that our keeper has come back out here, Liam. We thought we might have had a bit of an injury in place. Yeah, I think um, he's going to make the second half of the... Oh, no, he's not. He's took his top off. Is he going to come back on? Let's ask him himself. Are you coming off? I think so. I think so, yeah. My ankle is just gone. It's gone. Yeah, I went over on it when I tried to tackle that fourth goal, I think, and it just, I heard it pop and click. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> what was happened? My ankle. Oh, come on. You've been playing brilliant. Oh, Hasn't he been playing brilliant, oh, ladies no, and gentlemen? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. And none of us Thank can you. go in goal. So we'll snook it if you don't. I love the fact we've started an argument between teammates. You never said this in the changing room, did you? It's like, no, I'll go back on, I'm all right, I'm all right. And as soon as we get out of here. Looks like you're in goal. Stretcher, do you want to get on the stretcher? <laughs> so we've got no goal here. And, uh, and it, we've got a goalie out there in the audience. A, a proper goalie. <laughs> nah, 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 a real goalie. No? OK. Now, I think I might have spotted over here on the bench as well. We've got Josh Cuthbert down here. Uh, how are you doing now? Are you feeling this afternoon? Are you enjoying it? I am. I'm good. I just wish I took my chance earlier. Pretty annoyed at myself, you know. Are you going to get a chance to get back out there and have a go to do it? Five, ten minutes, he said. So hopefully just warm up the quads and then we'll get back out there. And how fantastic does it feel to be here this afternoon? It's, it's an incredible, like everyone said, it's an incredible day and, um, you know, what, a, what an amazing cause. And, to play at such an iconic stadium like Everton is just a dream come true. So, yeah, thank you for everyone for supporting and coming down. Appreciate it. No problem at all. Thanks to have us here. And here he is, strutting round, saying, how are you finding it out there, Ray? Are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm loving it. And what a crowd. You guys are amazing. Make some noise. It's Liverpool. Sound. Hey, I'm absolutely loving it. It's great. We've got a great like, bunch of lads out there. Absolutely giving it what for. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Go to the let Ollie get, a, 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 get past me. <laughs> well, you never know, Ray. You might get a chance to rectify that. I think it is time to hand back over, Liam, isn't it, to Graham White to continue with the second half. Well, we're ready for the second half, but uh, I can tell you that the Blues have got 12 players out there, I think, Ozzy. They Six, have seven, a mark out. He's allowed 12, kick-off yeah. to go ahead. I think they're trying to give, uh, give the Bradley's Blues a little bit of an advantage <laughs> going into the second half. But I also think the uh, Lowry Legends yes. may have 12 I on think they've well. got 13. I think the Lowry Legends have got 13, the Blues have got 12. It's a free-for-all out there. Mark Halsey's getting involved now as well. Good interception by Dan Osborne. Here's Kem <laughs> on the right-hand side. Has he got the pace to take on Jamie O'Hara? He wouldn't have thought so, and uh, Jamie O'Hara... Julie takes the ball off him. Yeah, I'm not sure what's quite going on, Darren, with regards to numbers, whether we can just play whatever numbers we want, but it's certainly 12 v 13 at the moment, and <laughs> as long as the referee's happy with it, then I'm sure the crowd will be. 12 for Bradley's Blues, 13 for Lowry's Legends. Here's Come shoot. on, not sort it out. <laughs> oh, it's not so it's 11 aside. Here's Chews, bit of space. Rolls it back to Oli Mears, who tries to slip it wide on that right-hand side to Alex Beatty, but uh, just couldn't reach it. Good challenge by Hibbert. Dan Osborne has it. Has a little look up, puts the ball in the penalty area. Decent ball in, but a little bit too close to the keeper in the end, does. Yeah, it was. It was... Um... You know, a nice little chip. Tony Hibbert won the ball really well on the front foot. But unfortunately, it was um, unable to be reached. Yeah, by the other fella. Yeah. <laughs> by that lad there. <laughs> Here's Gatsby. That wasn't great. 
<laughs> Lynch trying to do a little pirouette. Tony Hibbert won't stand for that, will he? Here's Chris Hughes. Hibbert, though, uh, sticks to his task. And eventually, Jeff Brazier can uh, clear the ball. Yeah, a lively start to the mm. second half. You know, not only with the action, but with the de decision to play as many numbers <laughs> as we feel like on the pitch. <laughs> In fact, Mark, Hal Mark Halsey's happy with it is, uh, uh, is great, so we continue. It's not, it's not often you have got 12 players on the pitch, but you're still at a numerical disadvantage. <laughs> Lovely little Megs there by, uh, by mm. Frankie. Osborne looking for Alex Beatty and uh, Alderton was happy to let the go. Now then, did that go for a corner? Yes, it did. I think that's going to be a corner. Yeah, Alderson tried to run it out, but uh, Lipinski wasn't allowing mm. that. So a bit more goal mouth action. There's Alex Beatty from Love Island down by the corner flag. Puts the ball out of play. I don't like those short corner routines. Put the ball in the box. Oh, I thought you were going to say I don't like those, pro those Love Island programs. <laughs> <laughs> Foul throw, you don't see them very no. often. Throw in from the left hand side. Kapinskis will take it. Reaches Tony Hibbert. He plays a square to Frankie Fryer, and Frankie Fryer off balance spins the effort yeah, wide of the target. And it stays. Bradley's Blues one, Lowry's Legends four. Here's Chris Hughes on this left-hand side. Showed a fine turn of pace on occasions in the first half, and now he's away from Tubes as well. He's done really well, Hughes. Gets to the byline, puts it back across the face of the goal. And the substitute goalkeeper, who we believe is Kevin Cooper, who's helped organise this event, was happy to let it fizz across the face of his goal there, Ozzy. Well, it's a, <laughs> it's a strange one. You know, when a goalkeeper comes out to, to, to stop a shot, he usually gets tight to his post and allows the ball to go across him and he... Here's Kem, a lot of space in the middle of the penalty area, but Kem wants it to go himself. Osborne picks it up on the edge of the box, plays it back and field to Kem again, goes for goal again and spins it wide and... Will that be a corner kick? Is it a goal kick? Oh, a bit of action at both ends of the pitch is what we like to see, but um, not quite inside the box. Kem just slices his shot, cuts right across it and I think it was closer to going over a throw-in than it was so see <laughs> at the back of the net. Yeah, didn't get that one right, did he? Jamie O'Hara. Nice first touch by Hughes. Gets away from Tony Hibbert as well. Hughes gives it to Lynch. Locksmith. Constable back to Lynch. It's a good move, this, but uh, Tony Hibbert times his tackle to perfection, as he did so many times over 300 odd games for Everton. Here's Sam Bailey. On the right-hand side, slides it through. There's a chance to get the ball inside the penalty area here, and it's cleared by the goalkeeper, Kevin Cooper. It's a corner kick. Yeah, Fenner's tried to play offside when he was about the fourth person from the last <laughs> man, and he still looked bewildered that the, the, the linesman hadn't given it. <laughs> Here's Constable. Oh, good play by Constable. Right-hand side of the penalty area, but uh, David Weir-esque header by Fenner's. Yeah, straight off the face, that one. Headed it straight out of play. Good header, though. <laughs> Corner kick for the Lowry Legends on the right-hand side at the park end. MC Harvey clips it into the penalty area. Tell you what, I think Jay James there was uh, shaping up for an overhead kick, wasn't he? He was, and I think it was Callum who ended up just, just taking it off him. One of his own teammates in Bradley's Blues will be delighted with that. Here he is, James. Sunnivell to Lynch. Jamie O'Hara, beat to it by Ken, but the ricochet favours the Reds, and Constable just clips the ball over the crossbar, goal kick, 
found himself in a great position. Turned really well, the defence dropped off and he just tried to... I think he was trying to strike at a goal and he just got underneath it a little bit and it was always rising. Anyways, shrugs off uh, Locksmith but gives the ball straight to Sam Bailey. Constable, back to Lynch and the little pockets of space beginning to appear now as the celebrities start to uh, understandably tire a little bit. MC Harvey goes for goal, but uh, Kevin Cooper, who I suspect is not a goalkeeper. It's <laughs> <laughs> Brazier. Hibble. This is better. Holly Mears threads it through to Kemp. Nice little turn by Kemp. Frankie Fryer. Back to Tubes. And Locksmith. Here's his lines. Hippo's quite far forward, isn't he? There's Osborne. Hibber wants it playing back. Tony Hibber Tony goes for goal. And wasn't far away. Oh, it's what thankfully, the crowd, thankfully. It's what the crowd <laughs> want to see, though. Uh, Tony Hibbert in advanced positions. <coughs> you know, he's played here many years. Didn't manage to score a goal except in that uh, testimonial match he had. Uh, and you can probably see why. Poor <laughs> <laughs> goal kick by Terry Alderton. It'll be a throw in for. The Blues on this right-hand side, trailing by four goals to one. What can Ian Snowden and Peter Reid, the two managers of the Blues, pull out the bag before the end of the game to try and reduce the deficit? There goes MC Harvey, the keeper's come right out of his goal. MC Harvey though has it left hand side. Threads it in field to Hughes. Heads of the penalty area. Hughes shot blocked by Hibbert. There's Lynch. Got such quick feet. The brilliant them freestylers, aren't they? Yeah, it's such good clo close control. And there's another goal. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a hat trick for Jamie O'Hara. And uh, Kevin Cooper in fairness is not a goalkeeper. And that is five goals to one. I mean, you just spoke about the, the close control from Lynch and the freestyle, and he, you know, in games like this, he really gets to show how how well he can manipulate the ball, and you know, he did so that on that occasion, sucked two or three players out of position, fed O'Hara, who, you know, as I said, he can still strike the ball as, as well as when he played in the top flight, and you know, a substitute keeper was never going to save that. Shane Ward's about to come back on, so is uh, Adam Woody, is he? <laughs> You've done off the near the Coronation Street theme tune here at Goodison Park, but it's out for Shane Ward. No way back for the Blues now, was is there? I wouldn't have thought so. I think this is the time where if you're going to take a gamble, you put Tony Hibbert up front, <laughs> see what he can do. That is a gamble. <laughs> Tubes to Brazier. They can always try putting a couple more players on, I yeah. suppose. Well, how many of the Reds got? They still got 13. Yeah. MC Harvey on Tony Hibbert, and uh, they both thought about ignoring the handshake, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> that might break, you know, for Smith on the far side, but it was well smothered by the goalkeeper, and it'll be a corner kick on the left hand side for the Blues. That could play all round. Um, you know, real, real sharp play in the end, and, and a good, good save low down. And uh, I haven't seen many corners pumped into the box. I'd like to see uh, a little bit of a melee in there and see someone going and challenging yeah. for the ball. Yeah, there's one. Decent as well from Osborne. Up go the heads. Will it fall to a blue foot? No, it won't. It's smashed clear. 
Jeff Frazier cushions a nice header to Tubes. Tubes goes for goal from distance, and I tell you what, he wasn't far away from 30 yards there, was he? Yeah, it was interesting technique. There was very little <laughs> back lift. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, but he, he struck it really well, follow through, sorry, there was very little follow through, but he really did strike it through, and I think the keeper was a little bit worried for the moment, you see, as they're scrambling mm. across, full stretch, and... Good effort, though, wasn't it? It, it was a great effort, and, and probably surprised the keeper a little yeah. bit, and if it was on target, it may have gone in. Jeff Brazier controls it nicely. Square ball to Fenners. Nice ball forward to Alex Beattie. Pass the chain ward. It's behind him, and Locksmith is there. Well, we have another one of our goal scorers joining us here in the dugout now. Jimmy, 911. What did it feel like putting one in the back of the net? Uh, yeah, especially the, the ground's amazing here. Obviously, yeah, they look after the pitch well, but yeah, my debut goal for these cele uh, celebrity games, so uh, yeah, well chuffed with that. And you've got your family watching as well today, haven't you? I have my uh, Claire and the kids are in the stands somewhere. Won't, won't, won't thank me for that, for embarrassing them. <laughs> <laughs> so is that you now, or are you going to get back out there? Going to get another run out before the end of the match? Uh, no, I'm definitely getting on. Whether, whether they like it or not, I'm going on. I mean, the thing is now, it's looking like a little bit of a whitewash at 5-1. Do you think there's anything Reedy and Snodside can do? Um, probably put about another four players on, might, might, might kind of even it up. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to be running away with this one. And as we speak there, I think a penalty has just been awarded to the Blues. Right, a chance for the Bradley Blues. Oli Mers has passed the mantle to Number go. seven, Shane Penalty Ward. Penalty for Bradley's Gladys Blues. Street. Shane Ward at the Gladys Street tucks it away nicely. Did me enjoy it. And Bradley's Blues, two Lowry legends, five. Yeah, and he added a little dab at the end as well, which, uh, you know, I'm, he seems I'm quite happy about. Uh, it was a debatable penalty. I think Mark Halsey's being very generous in uh, keeping the Blues in the game somewhat, but uh, well, well tucked away by, by Shane Ward. Right footed, sent the keeper the wrong way. Five two. They've now got 14 on Lowry Legends. Sam Bailey's just come on, just sneaked on on the far side. So the 14 on. And in fact, I think she's just doing a lap of honour, isn't she? <laughs> Starting a Mexican wave. And then in the park there, up the count of three, three, two, one, off we go. And while that Mexican wave's going, we will come back to Jimmy. Way right in the middle of it. Now they've got to go back five, two, eight. I think we can put another three in the net for every goal they get. It would be all right. What's the analysis? What do you think of that uh, penalty? Well taken? Uh, yeah, Shane did well, actually. Uh, he's normally got two left feet, so, yeah, he put that away well. I would think it's more nerve-wracking trying to score a penalty than it is standing up singing in front of thousands of people, isn't it? Well, Shane's a pro, you know, at the end of the day, he's, uh, you know, lots of music, and obviously he's in Corrie at the minute, so I don't, I don't think nerves is an issue for him. Um, but no, he did well, he finished that well. Now, Jimmy, we know that you are an ambassador of another charity that's very dear to us, the James Bulger Memorial Trust. Also being here today, what does it mean to you to support the Bradley Lowry Foundation and Evan in the community? Yeah, I think over the, over the um, especially over the last year, he's, you know, he captured everybody's hearts. Such a little superstar, uh, and obviously everybody's rallied round, loads of support for him, and, and rightly so. You know, he's. Um, we're here, obviously, for, for, the, for, the, for the right cause, and everybody, you know, all the money's going to the charity, and that's all we can ask for, you know, as much support as possible, people coming out. Um, and it, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm honoured to be here, to be honest. Obviously, um, it doesn't matter which ground it is, because I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> Said that quietly, didn't I? Do you know what? It's an absolute honour to have you with us. We don't want to keep you any longer, because we want to make sure you get back on, but thanks very much, Jimmy Constable, from 911, thank you.
be a corner kick on the right hand side for the Lowry legends and uh, one or two little tasty challenges going in now Aussie isn't there from one or two of them yeah as they start to tire giving the ball away a little bit yeah. cheaply they start <laughs> chasing their own mistakes and uh, yeah there's there's a foot or two being left in but you know they're, they're happy to get up and shake hands it's all yeah. in good spirits and it's um, you know it's 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 within the good sport of the game and yeah, absolutely I mean, you know, now we're even getting keepers coming out and, uh, and trying to <laughs> trying to get involved in in good skills, which was uh, great to see. Corner kick for Lowry Legends. MC Harvey will take it. Lynch. Oh, freestyle doesn't really work <laughs> like that. There's other players around you. There's Dan Osborne. Forward to Kemp. First touch takes him a little bit wide on that left hand side, but he's still got plenty of support. Tubes must be. And is. Tucks it away nicely. And I tell you what, this game's still alive, was he? 5 3, 27 minutes to go. Yeah, it was a great goal as well. And, you know, the, the energy shown from the Blues there, streaking forward on the counter attack, was, uh, was great. And that's what you makes you think that there's still something left in this game. And, Good play by Kemp, picked out Tube's edge of the box and he stroked it into the corner nonchalantly. Mm. Fantastic finish. Nice finish from Tubes, that'll get an airing on Soccer AM, I'm sure. <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> the Blues three, the Legends five. Nicely tucked away by the right boot of Tubes. And MC Harvey's being withdrawn here for Alex Ray. I don't know why they bother to... Well, I think what they do, they take one off and put three on, don't they? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen 13, 14 for the Reds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's 14 against 12 at the moment. <laughs> Just a mention for Mark Alty as well, the referee is... Uh, doing the um, You Are the Referee Kilimanjaro Challenge. He's uh, going to climb Kilimanjaro to raise money and awareness for the Steve Prescott Foundation. Check out the Steve Prescott Foundation website for more details of that one. But well done, Mark Halsey. Always happy to help out with cancer charities. There's a throw-in for the Blues, taken by Speed Omic. Wallied clear by Alex Ray. There's Dan Osborne. Look at Dan Osborne, look at this, give a big cheer. Inside the penalty area, just about cleared away. And here comes uh, Chris Hughes down this left hand side. Sellers, Tom Sellers, celebrity chef. Alex Wright. Pings it to the left-hand side, but Tubes heads it behind, and it'll be a corner kick. Yeah, he's just tried to cushion that one back to his goalkeeper mm. and forgot to jump off the floor. <laughs> That's actually what happened there, and he, he never actually got over it to be in control and ended up giving a corner away. Short corner routine again. Lynch to Hughes. Goes Jeff Brazen, but Hughes has the strength to hold him off, plays it back, and it's fired wide by Gatsby. Oh, that was good play by Hughes, showed great determination not to lose the ball. Kept on going, wriggled away, fought off Osborne in the box, and even had the, the time and, and the comfort <laughs> to pick out someone in the box. Speed or mix just Speed been sent been off. Sent off. <laughs> He's refusing to go, though. <laughs> 
In goes Alan Stubbs, heads it away. Speed only tries to head it on, but uh, couldn't get his skull cap to it. Sellers. Sorbell is through here. Great chance for Lynch, it must be. And that's it, 6 3. Nothing the keeper could do about that one. Bradley's Blues 3, the Lowry Legend 6 here at Goodison Park. 23 minutes to go, well, three quarters of the way through the game. Good play, good skill, great finish. Keeper couldn't really do much about it. Well picked out, good close control. Tony Ebert's trying his best, but uh, he, he didn't get a chance and it was, you know, placed high into the roof of the net and the keeper couldn't do anything about it. Good finish. Still managed to roll or two, the keeper, after he'd uh, <laughs> not quite saved it. There you go, one, two. <laughs> the goalkeeper is being substituted here over on the far side. I didn't think it was that bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's, uh, well, it's, all, it's all happening out there. Matt at Lipinskis is uh, EastEnders actor, is in goal. Lipinskis is in goal, and uh, Roger Dilks, the fourth official on the far side, has given Speedo Mick a goalkeeper jersey to give to Matt Lipinskis. Again. Why did you take the Tubes. Nice bit of footwork by Tubes. Plays it wide to Smith. Nice bit of footwork. Edge of the penalty area. Sweeps it in with the edge of his foot. Flicked on by Shane Ward. Must be a shooting chance for somebody. No. Couldn't get it away, and I think everyone's beginning to tire now, aren't they? They are, and Alex Ray was taking no nonsense there. He was determined to clear it, and did. Oh, what a lovely ball that is by Chesterman, but Gatsby just couldn't get there. And Kapinskis wasn't going to come second to that one. Alex Ray sweeps it wide to Hughes on the left-hand side. Frankie Fryer trying to get back. Penned in down there, Hughes, but he wins a throw in. And Sam Bailey again has just jogged onto the field on the far side. Into the penalty box, it goes towards Gatsby, but Tubes is there for Bradley's Blues. Summerbell shooting chance blocked by Alan Stubbs. He's done all right, Tubes, hasn't he, this afternoon? Yeah, especially this second half. He's uh, he seems fitter than most. He's still he's still running around the field and you know tapped it out with that goal he scored before, which was a great finish. Speed on it, goes for goal. Good interception by Brazier. Reaches Frankie Fryer. And, uh, he just gets a wrap on the ankle, I think, from his own player, Ollie Merz. There's Shane Ward inside the box, but Callum Best is there for Lowry Legends. Now then, Chris Hughes, he's quick, we know that. He's got a bit of space on this left-hand side. Switches the play towards Sam Bailey, but... Uh, she was never going to keep that in, Sam, was she? No, she wasn't, unfortunately. But I don't know if you've noticed, Andrew, but I think uh, Adam Woodyard's took over the managerial role yeah. for, the, uh, <laughs> for the Blues this afternoon. He's been on the sideline alongside the fourth official for the whole of the second half, dishing out orders, making his substitutions, and I think it's probably a good thing at our time. Peter Reid and Ian Snow have been relieved of their duties. <laughs> well, once they went in at half-time, maybe they didn't come back out again. Next substitution, 
Substitutions a plenty now in the last 20 minutes or so. Must get it from. I thought they were going to chip the goalkeeper then, but it's a good full drum by Gatsby inside the penalty area, and he's pulled it wide. Right, so should have done better there, Ozzy, shouldn't he? He should, but the whole thing came from a, uh, a, a moment of fun, shall we call it, with uh, Sam Bailey rugby tacky and tackling <laughs> run, young Sam, young Sam uh, Woodyard in, in the fullback position, and there were two of them were rolling around on the pitch. He had a big gap in the Blues' defence. <laughs> And they should have took better advantage of it. Please be here as he's going to be coming off. He's had a little cameo role, a little a little a a Shooting opportunity may be, no, Jeff Brazy is there and uh, Frankie Fryer from Soccer AM will keep it in on this near side. Fizz the ball into Shane Ward, who couldn't control it, cannoned off Shane Ward. And then uh, Jamie O'Hara goes for goal from the halfway line and uh, I thought for a second that was going to creep in then, Ozzy. Well, it was on target and it was it was going right in the top of the goal and it was the keeper had to really move his feet to get in the position to save it and <laughs> you know for a moment you think is he going to fall over and completely make a hash of it but he got there <laughs> just in time and, and made a good save. Here's Lynch on the left hand side, just over a quarter of an hour to go here at Goodison Park, six three for the Lowry Legends, Harvey Lynch, great chance, super chance, so oh, and our celebrity chef. Tom Sellers pulls it wide. He should have scored, it was great play. Toyin with the Blues defence near enough. Lynch and O'Hara playing some really good stuff. And the ball towards Frankie Fry will have bounced favour him, no, it doesn't. It wasn't a bad effort at the end. And it drifts wide. Just looking at that effort from Frankie Fry, it wasn't too far away. Now oh, that'll break for MC Harvey. Slides it through, but the offside flag is up against uh, Gatsby. the pitch never be substituted speedo mick how did that feel mate oh that was fantastic man honestly god i mean i could have stayed on there i think i was making a contribution you know <laughs> you got you got ian beals a thank for that for dragging you off what was that got ian beals a thank for dragging you off oh yeah oh, well, what's his, uh, is he on is he on the pitch now yeah he's on wait till he comes off <laughs> hey, I tell you what, nearly scored as well, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a good shot. Nah, no power, no power behind, and I'm afraid. Talk us through that red card. Did I get it? Yeah, it was you. Was it for me? Oh, all right. <laughs> I thought it was for the uh, linesman. <laughs> yeah. You see, he's playing the innocent now, isn't he? We know above you everything you do for charity and stuff. But how did it feel being out there today? Absolutely phenomenal. It was uh, honestly, God, I can't tell you how it feels to be playing on that pitch, do you know what I mean? It, it, it means the world to every single Everton fan in this ground and all around the world. So I'm a very lucky man and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Go to some park, make some noise for the legend, Speedo Mick! <laughs> and there's the seventh goal of 
the afternoon for the Lowry legends and Chris Hughes it is who found the back of the net. Bradley's Blues 3, Lowry legends 7 with 13 minutes to go, was he? And it was a pretty good goal. Was. Good pass by Jamie O'Hara, found Hughes and he rode that tackle fantastically well. He's looking up into the box, decides he's going on his own and curls it with the outside of his foot, which is fantastic technique. And he's been quite lively all afternoon. He has, yeah. he's, he's played well, he's showed some good close control and, and real energy. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's been impressive this afternoon. Still haven't seen uh, Graham Stewart in this second half, has he, have we? No, but I think that's a good thing for the Blues. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say strength. Yeah, I wouldn't say he helped them in any way in the first half. No. And, um, Brought nothing, nothing to the gig, did yeah, he? Yeah, I think once um, the managerial position got looked at, they realised he's better not being on the pitch. Well, Tony Hibbert spotted that uh, Hughes is the danger man on this left-hand side, and he just sprinted across and took it off in there, didn't he? And I think he may have ended Hughes' afternoon. <laughs> he's looking a little bit ginger down here. <laughs> Jeff Brazier. There's O'Hara. Stubbs. There's Tubes. Curl towards uh, Adam Woodyard. Great first touch by Adam Woodyard. Oh, oh, I thought that, that was, was the moment then, did you? That would have been fantastic. It was a great ball by Tubes, an even better first touch. And he just couldn't he just couldn't get after his second touch to finish it, but uh, great play. <laughs> Bit of showboating from Tubes there. Yeah, it's nice to see. I like to see that type of thing in games um, like this. You know, people showing their skill. What a touch this was oh, by Adam, Adam Woodges. He was a little bit unlucky, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think it was really good play from Callum Best to read the danger. Well, Frankie Fry, they've got plenty of men forward to Blues. Frankie Fryer leads the charge. Shipped into the penalty area, but headed back to the goalkeeper, almost headed over the goalkeeper. And uh, Jimmy Constable can't complete the clearance, it'll be a corner, almost a calamity. Yeah, unlucky for Frankie. Right, uh, Quinn tries to head it away, ends up getting it all wrong, and uh, the keeper just makes sure he, he saves it and, and nothing more. Comes Oli Mers again for a last little uh, ten minute cameo. Corner kick. Poor corner. And here come Lowry legends again. MC Harvey. Plays it wide to Alex Ray, back in field to MC Harvey. Crossed into the penalty area. But it's out for the goal kick. And I don't think anybody's really bothered about the scoreline anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that wants to play is out there. Now, despite the rain and the, the, the bleak day, everyone's having a great time. The scoreline is irrelevant. Mm. People are watching the game, having fun. The music's playing and the smiles on everybody's faces. And that's what the day's about. That's what it's all about. Here's Kemp, chance for the Love Island winner. Plays it to Dan Osborne, who caught it well enough, but it was always rising, and it's a goal kick. Yeah, Kemp should have took the shot on himself. He had a big gap just on the edge of the Legends penalty area and decided to pass it when he was probably in a better position mm. himself. And, uh, you know, he may look back and wish he'd have took that shot on. Here's Ray Quinn. To Sellers. 
It's offside, is it? Well, no, the lads are keeps his flag down, and it's Locksmith. Locksmith pulls it back, but straight to Jeff Brazier. Well read by Brazier. Yeah. Three players against him. He was on his own defensively. Speedo Mick was trying his best, but not really. <laughs> he was treading water. And uh... well, he's a bit overdressed, <laughs> Speedo Mick, isn't he? Oh, it's a terrible ball from Hibbert. Oh, Poor his head's ball. gone. His head's gone. Poor ball. Stubbsy, Stubbsy thinks he's playing rugby now as well. Play on, says the referee. <laughs> as Stubbs brings it away, chips it forward to Tubes. Tubes chips it forward, looking for Dan Osborne on the left-hand side. He's still got possession, Osborne. He's got plenty of blue shirts to pick out. And he reaches Kem, who goes for goal. And... We can it's see why he didn't glory. shoot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after a, an opportunity like that, you can see why he didn't take the shot on before. He's probably eight, ten yards, ten yards, no, 14 yards out, mm. and he blazes Ooh. it high, wide, and certainly not handsome. No, no composure there. Seven minutes to go, and it's been good fun here at Goodison Park. It's 7-3 for the Lowry legends, but that, as Ozzy said, doesn't matter one jot. It's all about the smiles on the faces and the money that's been raised for the Bradley Lowry Foundation and, of course, Everett in the community as well. And the least said about that effort from Lee Evans. We can't call him Latchford Evans after that uh, effort, can we? Not round these parts. Throwing from Osborne to Tony Hibbert. Please, yeah. And Tubes. Tubes is just shooting at every opportunity now, isn't he? Yeah, if, I think he's probably had the most shots on the field and <laughs> probably the most off target as well. He's, uh, I think he's hit the target once. He's, he's now tiring and you start to make mm. poor decisions when you're tired and... He's played a lot of the game, to be fair to him. He he's, has, yeah, uh, he's been out there a while. And he's ran around the pitch quite a lot, and certainly more than others out there. Um, so, you know, we forgive him his, his miscalculation or, or his pulled shot yeah. on this occasion. Poor effort. <laughs> Tony Alderson takes the no, short no, goal no, kick. No, Ollie Merce no, in field towards Shane Ward. Let's it run for Kemp. Kemp finds Tubes. Simon Webb, Lee Latchford Evans carries it forward but runs into too many red and white shirts and the ball is cleared. Well, we do have with us here another one of our Lowry legends, don't we, Scott Robinson? Of course, how does it feel this afternoon? It's brilliant. I mean, the turnout's been fantastic. Uh, we're all so chuffed to be here playing for such a wonderful cause. And uh, I'm on the winning side. So. I was just going to say that it must feel even better for you. I mean, what a side you've put out today. Some great players as well. Yeah, some very good players. And uh, we've just enjoyed every minute of it. It's been fantastic. So what's it like actually being on the pitch here at Goodison Park? What's it feel like when you ran out for the first time? It's, uh, I mean, I've played on a few uh, parts, but this is unbelievable. The, the standard of the, of the pitch is just sensational. And uh, the day's been fantastic. So, Fotty fan yourself, which team do you support? I'm an Arsenal fan, but at the moment I'm a bit <laughs> embarrassed to say that. Yeah, uh, I am a gooner, yeah. So, uh, obviously, there's only about six minutes left. Do you reckon you can uh, sneak a few more goals in before the end of the game? 
I reckon there'll be one more and we'll, we'll win 8-3. Perfect. Oh, very confident. What do you think about the, uh, the penalty decisions and sending off? It's, it's been a very lively game that way, hasn't it? The, the first one wasn't a penalty, really because uh, and the second one definitely was. I don't know what they were playing at. Callum just kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he's on that side, can't you? Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for being so much for part of the day for Bradley Lowry Foundation and, of course, Evan in the community. Thank you very much to Scott Robinson. Thank you. Here's Locksmith in possession. Look at the space there for Tom Sellers, but it's intercepted by uh, Alan Stubbs. To speed over. Me. Ian Snowden's in trouble with the referee here by the dugout. He's just been arguing with the. Uh, he's been arguing with the fourth official, Ian Snowden. And, uh, Roger Dogs tells Mark Halsey what's happened. And Ian Snowden has been sent off. <laughs> oh, a little bit of pantomime for the uh, for the crowd. They've enjoyed it. Ian Snowden's not had a great afternoon, decision-wise and uh, team talk wise So it's probably capped off just rightly with his uh, with his red card. Snodds is sent to the stand. I think that's a I think that's a that's a help me beat the traffic move. <laughs> Alan Stubbs plays the free kick forward towards Ken, who puts Callum Best under pressure as well, does Ken? Ooh, and almost slides it in from the narrow angle. But with a minute and a bit to go, 7-3 for the Legends. It's been a good, fun afternoon, has it? It has. As I said before, the weather's not great and it, it, it's a little bit cold, but everybody has got a smile on their face. Everybody has enjoyed themselves immensely, from the players to the, the fans, to everybody who's helped out. And, Alan Stubbs has just presented MC Harvey with the goal that he craves. No! He wants a penalty and he's not going to get it. Here's Sam Bailey trying to take on Jeff Brazier. Just and couldn't do so. And she nutmegged him and uh, mm. Jeff just didn't know right. really to get around no, to get no, after no. I think if she'd have took him on another way. Say, yeah. She may have been in. But to Alex Ray, now it's with uh, Lynch. Carry the ball a long way, the red shirts are forward. Sam Bailey's in space, he must give it to Sam Bailey, and he does. Sam Bailey goes for goal! And it's well saved. Here's Sam Bailey again, seeing plenty of the ball, and Alan Stubbs a little bit slow to react there, has he? Yeah, <laughs> to be fair, he's, he's had a poor couple of minutes as Alan Stubbs. There's the final whistle at Goodison Park. Bradley Blues 3, Lowry Legends 7. The goal scorers and the final result matter, not a single jot. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of awareness and a lot of money raised. Leon Osman. Yeah, it's been a great day. 7-3 probably doesn't do the, the team justice. There was more action out there that even that suggests and um, it's been a great one for the fans to watch everybody's enjoyed themselves despite the poor weather and uh, everybody's going home happy the players take the acclaim from the supporters it's been a great afternoon everybody's put a shift in a lot of staff by the way from Everton Football Club have given of their time as well this afternoon to come along and make sure that it all went smoothly it's finished Bradley Blues 3, the Lowry Legends 7. Once again, Goodison Park makes some noise for the Lowry Legends in the Bradley Blues.